Hello, I'm Kazool, and welcome to my lair. Now, you've just entered into my crucible. What is that, you ask? A crucible is a situation of severe trial in which different elements interact, leading to the creation of something new. Now, that definition, in my opinion, is really accurate to what cosplayers do and the creative process. Like, every cosplayer takes materials from the hardware store and the fabric store and anywhere else and combines them into something new and awesome. So for me, I've always enjoyed trying new things, like things that I've never seen anybody do, things that I've never tried before. And so I, I'm, I'm just always curious. So, and I always like to push myself to the limits. In this video series, I intend to welcome you to my crucible and show you all my experiments and my thought processes as I'm trying to develop and learn something new. Um, there will be successes, there will be failures. But in the end, we will emerge with new knowledge, and even if that knowledge is just how not to create something, it is still valuable. This week, I was curious about the eyes that I developed. If you haven't seen the tutorials, go ahead and click the screen and you'll find the link right to them. I wanted to know if I could push the depth and realism even further and also see if I could make them glow. If you have seen my other cosplays like my troll cat and my Arakoa, you know that I'm a fan of glowing eyes. <laughs> but it, could I make an eye like Greymane's glow is the question. I decided the answer to that lies in clear resin. Now, I haven't personally worked with clear resin much before, so I, before I dove into just using it, I decided I first went to YouTube and watched other creative people and their tips on how to use it. So I'm going to start out with the filling the front of the eye with a clear resin. The resin I'm using is Illuminite's Amazing Clear Cast. It was the probably the easiest one for me to get to because I've seen this one all over in tons of uh, Joann's and Michael's. It's easy to find. If not, you can do Amazon. Um, it's easy, just 50-50 ratio. Um, and I carefully read the instructions beforehand and I suggest that you do too and I've got to mix it really slow. I'll slow down and show you the actual speed at which I'm stirring. Yeah, it's really slow, so I'm going to speed it up like a ton so we don't have to watch that very much. But also if you noticed on the back of the eye, I glued a little black tab so that I could hold on to it better. And of course I'm wearing proper safety equipment like the respirator and the gloves and my window is open around it. And I can see there's a lot of little bubbles in it, but nothing I could do. So I'm trying to just slowly drip this on to make sure that it gets into all those little grooves the best I can. And I was dumb. I should have filled up the eye first with a little bit. I've, I've seen other people do it using a little lighter to pop the bubbles. And I tried my straw technique. That was a bad idea. Don't do that. It fogged up everything and I was really worried that the moisture would affect the cure. Luckily it didn't, but that was a dumb idea. Don't, don't copy me. So just filling it up, making sure that it has enough volume in there, then I'll pick back up that eyeball and just kind of keep working the resin into it. Basically so that the, the bubbles are less likely to get trapped there. I'm gonna try to pop some more bubbles. My efforts were futile. It probably would have worked better if I would have waited a few minutes to actually add that part in. Anyway, you can see me kind of floundering here. You know, you know what? Things don't always go right the first time that you do them. And that's what's going on here. Anyway, with that done, I take the rest of the resin that I had mixed up and I add some blue, so strong pigment 
from smooth on into it. I decided on blue because I haven't colored my eyes blue yet, so I wanted to see how this is. This is for the glowing eye, actually, because I had to set the other one aside to cure. So mix in the blue, slowly put in some resin, and make sure that that fills all the ridges first just like I do when I'm casting the other resin into the eye. And then just slowly scooping them in. I wasn't too concerned about the bubbles on this one since this is an open face mold. A lot of those bubbles would rise to the surface and be able to escape. I was more concerned about the other eye with the... because bubbles could get easily trapped and... Eh. Well, I guess we'll see how that one turns out in a bit. So now for the demolding and oh no, oh, this is gross. So what happened was the resin that was dripping out of it dripped out and around and I thought that it was ruined, but I kept picking at it and that little piece of resin flew off. So I guess it wasn't a complete failure. But as you can see, there are still tons of little micro bubbles in there that makes it cloudy. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the resin filled eye and my regular one, like exactly what's in gray main. And you can see the front of the eye, the resin, I don't know, makes this magnification of it. And so it looks like it's a lot bigger and takes up the front surface of the eye. And it looked really cool. I liked it. So the conclusion of this experiment, it has a ton of potential. I really like the effect that it did, but I think I will only do it again when I have a vacuum chamber so that I can degas my resin and make sure to get those bubbles out of there. Now here, um, there we go, pop that out. Um, pretty bubble free. I really wish that I had a vacuum degas chamber because then that would, I'd be able to put my resin in there beforehand and pull out all the air bubbles. That would have solved a lot of my problems through this process. But anyway, moving on to making the blue eye glow. So my thought behind this was that I still needed to black out the pupil, so I grabbed some craft foam and cut it to the shape of the pupil and glued it to the back. There's my little test LED. So, and I decided that I needed to paint the inside of the pupil area to help black that out as well. And this will need several layers. The Just one layer won't do it. You'll be able to see the light through it. So off camera, I actually added a lot more layers to this, probably about five in total. But here you'll see me adding on the final la layer, which I thought it was pretty good at, at this point with layer five. All right, with that out of the way, I also decided that I wanted to test out a wash on the eye. Since it was clear resin, it didn't really show the details much. So I did a quick wash on just one half of it because I wanted to test if it was necessary, if it looked good. So thin down some paint, put it all over, and then wipe off just the top ridges of it. Then this paint stays in the, in the bottom ridges and kind of creates some contrast with the, the top. Now this packing material, I've heard it called astrofoam once in my life. I'm not sure that's correct, but it's, I save pieces of it whenever I find it in the mail. So I'm using this cause I need an LED diffuser. I need to position the LED right behind the pupil cause I don't want a hot spot in my eye. Just that will help diffuse the light evenly throughout the rest of it. So I'm satisfied, so I'll just glue that in place real easy. Now I'm gonna do exactly like my other eye tutorial, where I'm gonna take the black craft foam and create the sclera around my eye. So just a reminder how, to, how I did that was just 
heat up some craft foam with a bevel on the edge, form it around and glue it to the ridge, the edge of the eye. There you go, I think it's working pretty darn good at this point. Um, what I need now is to black out the inside and put a backing to the LED. I don't want that, you don't want a bright LED shining you in the face inside a mask at all. So you gotta black it out. And I thought that maybe this foil would help reflect, reflect the light better going forward and make it even brighter. Now I just need to cut a little hole through there so I can feed the LED through. And a perfect fit. There you go. Nice even lighting. It's all blacked out from the inside. And here we'll go do a test in a dark room to see what it looks like. Looking cool. Now, see, the problem I found is when you turn the LED off. This eye all of a sudden got super dark when you turn the LED off. So in conclusion, I think that this technique kind of worked, kind of didn't. It, it looks awesome all lit up, but I don't think it's worth the downside of having it look so dark when it's not lit up. I will have to do something else to address that issue in the future. So I hope you enjoyed those two experiments. While the glowing eyes only half worked and the resin filled eyes has potential for success uh, when I get a vacuum to the asser, um, I would still call this session a success uh, because I tried. It was Thomas Edison that said, I have not failed, I have found 10,000 ways that won't work. Now that I've tried, I won't have the nagging question of what if? And now that I know what doesn't work, I can more quickly get on to what does work. I really hope you enjoy seeing my experiments, and I hope that the next time you have a question, that the fear of failure will not keep you from trying. Remember, perfectionism can be crippling. If you want to support me in making more videos like these, then please subscribe. And also, I've put Amazon affiliate links in the description below. If you click the links and then shop on Amazon like normal, I'll be able to get a little money and that'll go right back into supporting making more videos like these. So again, thank you so much for watching. This is Kazool reminding you to embrace your inner beast. <laughs>